Math is important. You use it in your everyday life. For example, calculating what time you'll be at a destination. It is very important that you continue and learning math. Math rocks. I love math. Hey guys, this is Mr. Ng going over 8.5 Immigrated Math 3 quiz number 5, 1.1, 1 .1, 1 1.4, September 27, 2024. We're working with quadratics for questions 1 through 6, not including 5. We're going to use this so you can repeat that for every problem. This has to factor. So we've been using the Xbox. You'll notice that there is no greatest common factor in this problem. <clears throat> I'm gonna write standard form above it. And then we can identify that A is one, B is two, C is negative 15. A times C is negative 15. My B value is two. You can list out all the factors of 15. And bigger number on the left, you can kind of subtract. This is gonna multiply to negative, so one of these has to be negative. This is gonna be a positive, so five <coughs> times negative 15. Negative three equals negative 15, five plus negative three or five minus three equals two. Now the trick is, if a is equal to one, you only need to use the um, x. If a is greater than one, you have to use the x in the box. So that was the trick. If you don't understand the trick, keep using the x in the box. When you have a trinomial, one, two, three, and half of two is one. If you were using the box, x squared, negative 15, here, these two, you're going to add an x because 5x minus 3x equals 2x. So 5x, negative 3x. You're gonna go ahead and factor. Um, they have an x in common. They have an x in common, so x times x is x squared. They have a, um, looks like a positive five. Remember, x times five equals five x. This is a negative three. Negative three times x is negative three x and negative 15. So my answers are here on the outside for factoring. x plus five, x minus three would be choice E. <clears throat> okay, same idea. So you can, I'm using this one again. And we've already factored, which is x plus five times x minus three. Now when it wants to know, circle the, what are the roots or x-intercepts? What are the solutions is another name. Or the zeros. Well, that just basically means, remember, where it crosses the x-axis. So if I split up to solve, so this, this problem here is all about solving. Split up, set it equal to zero. Subtract five, you get x equals negative five. Add three, you get x equals three. So this would be over here, and this would be over here. A is one, so it'll go up like this. Okay, so negative five and uh, three. Okay, so same thing, same problem, right? Now it's saying circle the correct answer, which is the y-intercept of the function. So we actually already know the y-intercept is the c value, which is negative 15. So negative 15 is your answer. Now, if you didn't know that, here's a clue. A y-intercept has an order pair zero comma something. So if you put in x for zero, so if you have this equation, and you put in zero, 
you get zero plus zero minus 15 and you'll get negative 15. So when f was zero, you got negative 15. So that's the order pair, neg zero comma negative 15. And that matches because it's zero, negative 15. This one is um, negative five comma zero. So our y value is equal to zero. Okay. Okay, back side. <laughs> what is the vertex of the function? So if I take the same thing, we found a to be one, b is two, c is two. C is negative 15. <laughs> um, the vertex is the one that goes, remember, it's in the middle of my table. So this one. And connected to the graph, it's in the midpoint. So you can probably figure it out here, negative five, and three, the distance is four, so negative one is probably in the middle. Okay, let's figure it out. X equals negative B over two A. B value is two. Two times my A value is one. So this is two divided by two. So that equals negative one. Well, I don't need all the other order pairs. I just need this one. The vertex is in the middle. So um, if you put a negative one into your equation, you can do that in your calculator by hand. So that becomes one, negative two, negative 15. So, f of negative one, that becomes uh, negative one, negative 16. So negative one comma negative 16 is the vertex. And that makes sense because it's the lowest point, right? If this was um, negative 15 should be that point. This point will go lower. So that would be negative 16. Okay, let's keep let's let's skip to question number six because I already have the graph. So the graph is looking like this. Let me just use this one. So this is negative 15. This is negative 16. So the domain goes left to right. So negative infinity to positive infinity. Bottom, which is the lowest number, which would be on the y-axis, negative 16, to positive infinity. Okay, so that would be our answer for domain and range. For this one, there's no math operation. So it's not adding. That's probably a common mistake of students. So this goes on the outside. We're going to first multiply, then we're going to add. <laughs> 10, negative 15i, 6i, and this becomes positive times the name is negative, three times three is nine, i times i is i squared. Remember a big idea, i squared equals negative one. So there it is. So that becomes nine. So let's write out the four terms. 10 minus 15i plus six i. Um, 
that becomes 9. So in the form of a plus bi, I'll have 19 plus negative 15 plus 6 would be negative 9i. And that would be our answer. Hope that was helpful. See ya. That's all for today, Rebels. Have a Mathematical Monday.